Happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Last weekend, or last weekend, two weeks ago, we unboxed the Elegoo Mars, which was a really nice compact resin printer. This Sunday, we're unboxing the... Uh, hold on. We're unboxing the Vive... What's it called? Vive, Vive something. Vive Dino, yeah. The Vive Dino Formbot Raptor 2.0. This is kind of a, this is kind of a beast. Um, for everyone asking, slow mode. Uh, slow mode is just you know you get to write one message every five seconds. Just keeps the spammers down. Um, but yeah, so this is a 22 kilogram, 400 by 400 by 500 centimeter. No, millimeter. Um, 3D printer, resin, no, not resin 3D printer, uh, regular filament 3D printer. So it's kind of like, it, it's built like the CR10, um, obviously that's why it's in the title, but it's kind of a, a nicer version of it because it has, where do I actually open it? So I think I'm gonna open this sideways maybe. It has, you know, the feature list is long, it has, ah. Sticky stuff on the side, that's that's a good start. Trinamic drivers, it has a direct drive extruder, which is really nice. It has a heated bed that goes up to 150 degrees, supposedly. It has a hardened that goes up to 350 degrees, supposedly. It has a filament sensor, it has a BL touch on there, a PEI on the bed. You know, the feature list is quite long, but the question is, does it actually print? Does it actually work? But yeah. Uh, now the thing is, this thing is, you know, 22 kilograms, it's not that heavy, but it's uh, it's just unwieldy. It's hard to lift. So yes, uh, I guess let's just dig in. So it comes in this typical, you know, stuff you get from China, yellow sticky tape. This is the widest sticky tape I've ever seen. Uh, I, don't, I don't, actually don't know why they do that, why they package. Holy crap, are these some, some beefy uh, zippers on here. So. I don't actually know why they do this with the yellow tape now, but yeah. So just to get it out of the way, so this is a, a again a 400 by 400 by 500 millimeter 3D printer. You can get it even bigger. You can even get it uh, in a 700 millimeter height, which is kind of I don't know. I, I feel like it's too much with a moving bed. So I believe this is the smaller one that I asked for, or that uh, form bot or Vive. Vive Dino sent me. Uh, so it is slightly smaller and this one is 900 euros uh, through AliExpress. I paid another 200 euros in uh, imports and fees and all that to FedEx I believe. And that's that you can also get it from some European resellers. Um, obviously with imports and all that included if you're in Europe and if you're looking into that. But otherwise, yeah, 900 euros for this model. You can also get it with a uh, with a laser add-on, though. As always, lasers without protection, you're gonna have a hard time actually importing those because they're, you know, not really legal to use or to sell to end users to consumers. Holy crap! So I can see why they why they actually need all this reinforcement stuff because again it is a heavy machine which makes me kind of cautiously optimistic that it's actually going to be a solid machine and it's going to be a mechanically solid machine uh who do we have in chat country 3d part 10 ronin who else is here let me just scroll up real quick here yeah it's filling up thanks everyone from uh, for joining in so is this is just this thing is too big i'm hoping i'm hoping it's gonna fit better into the uh oh it's already popping open it's gonna fit better into the frame uh once it's assembled so i'm thinking this will come as a two-part uh yeah two-part assembly kind of like the cr10 where it's um a where, it's, where the base is pre-assembled and then the top just gets mounted on top of it or the the vertical z-axis basically 
they're saying it's it's only gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes to assemble. I'm feeling it's already taken me longer to just get the package open. <laughs> We're already five minutes in and I've just managed to get the packaging dug into. Box number one. God damn it, this is a this is a 12 millimeter lens. Package number two, this doesn't have anything in it. That is just, yeah, that's just, holy moly, this is big. That is, it's hard to convey scale on a video, but, <laughs> wow. This is big. So yes, one of the other features that I, that I forgot to mention, it has lead screws. It, does, it doesn't just have, well, it has ball screws. There we go. It doesn't just have lead screws on the Z-axis, it has actual ball screws, which are different to lead screws in the way that these are basically ball bearings. So they're very high efficiency and they're usually also made to a, a higher precision than, ah, oh, than just lead screws. I'm thinking to actually, no, oh, hold on. I can just lift this up. Okay, there's the Z-axis truss and it's connected somehow. No, just two stepper connectors. Let me just put that to the side rope. This is, I mean, this is nice and heavy stuff, but it does have, hold on, this is not mechanical. Oh yeah, it does have the end screw together. So some people were already asking on Twitter, um, like, is it actually gonna be solid enough and just like the CR10 and other printers, um, it has these profiles connected with a through bolt. It's a bit too dark, isn't it? Uh, with a through bolt, which means that this joint right here, this 90 degree, is just going to be really nice and sturdy. Ah, Chris Riley is also here. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, and the other thing, right, the other thing that, that, I, that I guess I should be... I should at least mention is the way that they're doing the linear rails. So. Typically you'd have like an LMATU if you're if you're really into it. But this is a supported dual six millimeter rail, it looks like. Let me show you the end real quick. There we go. So that's what that profile looks like. Come on, there. So that's what it's actually riding onto. It's an aluminum core and then it has two, I assume, hardened six millimeter rails on the side where the actual carriage rides on with this is going to be exhausting. Uh, with these steel wheels, maybe, where are they? There they are. Yeah, these steel wheels actually ride on those, uh, on those tracks, but it looks like the x-axis is just a regular open build. All right. Mm. Okay, since that was such a chore to get out, I'm, I'm hoping the rest is going to be a not any worse. Another pack. It's definitely well packaged and it looks like it did make it over from China in one piece. Whether it's the next Prusa, well the thing is, so on the price topic, I've, I've seen some people mention that it's like three times the price of a CR10. The thing is, this guy is also significantly larger than a CR10. I can I can bring over the CR10 for size if you want to in a second, but this is significantly larger. Like, I'll I'll bring a CR10. Give me one. Ah, running out of space. I'll bring a CR10 over in in a second. So, so they do include one spool of PLA. That is nice. This is the printer's, the Raptor's base. There we go. And just for his size, give me one second here. Now, why, why, I'm, why I'm bringing out the, uh, the size topic is because, well, the CR10, if you get it in the larger sizes, is also significantly more expensive than the base one, which is 300 by 300 by 400 in the Z axis, I think. So, uh, there's the CR10. Four size. This is the Raptor. This is the CR10. You know, it looks tiny in comparison. It looks absolutely tiny when you put them next to each other, even though the CR10 is already kind of an unwieldy machine. So, 
<laughs> it just dwarfs it. So that's the CR10 in comparison. Thankfully, there's some space under the table here. There we go. And for those of you asking whether it's going to be the next Prusa, well, here is the current Prusa. This thing fits on the bed of the Raptor. So, yeah, I'm hoping that gives you a bit of an idea of, of how large this thing actually is, um, because it is, it is crazy. By the way, is this front camera in focus? It doesn't look like it is. So yeah, this is a, this is a really large boy. It's just mechanically from, from the weight and size and, and materials that you get, um, you, you get a lot more printer dimensionally. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for the $2 tip. Ah. <clears throat> Pay back to you. All right, should we get this assembled? You can print the Prusa in one go. Uh, yes, yes. So again, size 40 by 40 centimeters by 50, and you can get the extended version, which is 70 centimeters tall. So just to give you... I'm gonna have to thread this in somehow. Just to give you a size reference, like this is not this is not wide angle that's making this printer look big. Um, I'm missing a manual. You guys all know how much I love manuals, so let me just check what else we get in here. Who needs a belt printer? Yeah. The one thing I'm kind of worried about is just the weight of this bed. It does have the nice uh, linear rails on the y-axis as well. And actually, actually, it doesn't feel that heavy. It's a relatively thin, um, bum, bum, bum. it's a relatively thin aluminum plate, which I love. This is this is the kind of bed that I like. It does have a where is it? Yeah, it does have a silicone heater underneath. So this is a four-ish millimeter. It does have a bit of a thing here, but it does have a four-ish uh, millimeter uh, aluminum sheet on top, which. If you've seen the heated bed comparisons, that is exactly what I like to see on these printers. And the undercarriage is relatively thin, like two and a half or three millimeter aluminum too, with a space optimized construction. So it's not just a, it's not just a slab, but it's just this cross beam and then a angle bracket on the end here. So the bed is actually, it, f okay, that, that doesn't look right. The bed is actually feeling relatively light, to be honest. So it might, it might just be all right. There's a power supply in there somewhere. Okay, let me check if you can find a manual. Out of focus on the main cam, uh, I will check in a second. Well, you know what? I'll actually just put it on auto focus because, yeah, be lazy. There you go. That should be better. Cool. Let me see. Build quality actually looks really nice. So there are a bunch of parts in here, like these brackets here, these 90 degrees, that are just really rough. They're just, uh, well, they're aluminum cast. Um, the shroud here on the power input is actually 3D printed, which I'm, I'm liking. Um, overall, it, it, does have, it does have an oily feel to it, which is always uh, kind of disgusting, but yeah. USB cord, actually changed up these scenes so that I can zoom in. A few tools, a few hex keys, two large bolts. I'm thinking this is for the Z axis, Z axis. Power cord, wait, why is there, why is there a power cord in here? When there already is a power cord over here. So are they, that, that's interesting. So they're giving you two power cords uh, two plugs, one for the one for the heated bed. I assume this is, and let me check. Yeah, there's a hoo, 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 there's an SSR down here. One for the heated bed and one for the rest of the printer. So I don't want to know how powerful this heated bed is. Probably it's for U.S. markets where you don't have that much power out of a single outlet. Um, yep. But yeah, here it should be fine. Here we can get uh, 3.6 kilowatts out of a single plug. Right, so this is the um, the tool head that you get. It's separate from the rest and there's a, oh, user manual, you get a digital one. 
Let me just show you this tool head real quick. So this is the tool head that is supposed to go uh, into focus in a second. There we go. This is the 350 degree BL Touch tool head. Let me check. So this BL Touch, I do have a, a, a box full of, ooh. Okay, not sure if that is that is how the how they come now, but I do remember them looking a bit different. So ah, uh, if anyone knows whether this is like this is how they come now, so this is just a little plastic nub, and I do remember them coming with the actual steel pin sticking out the bottom. So that's on the side of the hot end. There's an, a small motor here, um, filament sensor. So this is just the standard kind of clicky switch filament sensor that you thread your filament to. I find these kind of inconvenient because you always have to thread your filament through another piece now. Um, there is a D sub connector. So this is like if you if you remember VGA, uh, that's connecting the entire hot end. And then there we have the 350 degree air quotes uh, hot end. However, this he this heat break does not look like an all metal heat break. That looks like a Teflon lined heat break, just judging by the size. Uh, the larger ones are typically one, the ones that still have the PTFE running all the way down to the nozzle. So if that is true, I'm, well, I'm gonna have to take this apart after this live unboxing. I don't wanna ruin this printer before I even get it printing. Uh, if that is true, I don't think this thing should be used to 350 degrees at all. So this is more like a 240 degree hot end. Uh, I'll look into that, but you know, it should be, oh, this, this, act, this actually has been tested. So this is not uh, totally fresh and unused. So this black stuff that's coming out the top here, probably, I can zoom in even further. Ooh, hoo, hoo. This black stuff that's coming out of the top of the heat break there, looks like it's the same black stuff that's on the bottom of the nozzle so this thing looks like it's leaking like crazy oh actually that's kind of stretched okay i, I stretched this zoom i'm sorry so it looks like this heater block is already leaking uh during the test print but it's a v6 clone obviously uh this is not a genuine hot end we're just gonna have to see how well this does but overall uh some people were also asking whether it does have dual drive gears it does not it just has a single one and then an idler bearing, all 3D printed by the way. So that's nice. I, I wonder if they actually published files for this. Um, filming guidance looks relatively good. Does have the, that guide piece with a Teflon piece in the middle that goes up to the drive gears or to the drive gear, just a single one. But yeah, um, let's try and get this assembled. It looks looks decent. Looks decent. It's just, uh, yeah, it's not a, it's not an all metal. It's not an all metal hot end, unless it's three millimeters, which it, I, uh, no, it's not. So it's a one point seven five millimeter printer. So that's not going to be three hundred fifty degrees, unless you replace. Well, probably the thermistor is not going to be happy with that temperature either. Where did I put my knife? Oh, there it is. Always leave your knife hanging around open. <laughs> uh, where do we use 240 volts? Um, we have 230 volts here in Germany. Uh, typically 16 amps out of a single one-phase hot end. Uh, hot end. Out of a single one-phase plug. That looks like a spool holder to me. So this has the type that runs on the edge of the spool with two bearings. Not a fan of that, but it may work. Oh yeah, and there's the... Oh. <laughs> there's the bungee uh, hot end cable extender thing. So I believe it's this way where you have the hot end or the, the tool head connected down here and then this connects to the frame up here. So it's kind of suspended. Uh, could work. The choice of spring is interesting. This looks like a like some toy spring thing, but okay, okay, we'll we'll give it a shot. And then also, it looks like it's it's hard to see. Yeah, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it said Celsius explicitly. Yeah. 
Come here. Uh, you're stuck. Uh, some people pointed out on Twitter that it, does, it didn't look like it had a control panel. It does. So it has this, you know, regular graphical uh, screen here that attaches somewhere up front here. So no, 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 no. Okay, can't can show it because it's too big. So this attaches towards the front of the frame. Uh, you get, well, this, this thumb screw here and then your regular control panel. It does have a panel, which would be weird if it didn't. And now lastly, electronics. Yeah, that's one way to use up all the VGA cables. This looks like it's a proprietary board. We can try and give you guys a, a look inside. I don't want to screw this uh, or unscrew this for now. So you, well, you can't really see much in there, but it does have a relatively large fan. This is a 80 millimeter fan-ish. It does have plugged drivers. You can see those back there, the white ones, uh, the TMC2208, I suppose. That's at least what it's advertised with. Boy, it looks, I mean, decent, but you never know which components exactly they use. This is nice. So this is like the universal connector for everything that plugs into this receptacle, as I assume over here, which eh, over here. So plugs in there. That looks like an IDE connector, sort of. Like the, the 40 pins, it's like connector recycling <laughs> galore here. Main screen not focusing, front camera not in focus. Ah, god damn it. Actually, yeah, it is not in focus. Cool. Me and my fancy autofocus lenses. There we go. Switch that back to manual focus. Let's make sure it is in focus and it is. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out. Wouldn't want to give you guys a blurry 4K stream. All right, um, so there is no paper manual included, which means all we get is the digital manual. It's, it looks like it's relatively straightforward to assemble. Yeah, there are these holes um, through the frame where you connect the vertical one, vertical, vertical Z-axis truss. So let's go ahead and check out what we get on the Definitely genuine SanDisk 4 gigabyte card. Oh. <laughs> the printer started with well, three minutes turned on. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. So a uh, SanDisk 4 gig card, I assume this is also gonna be used for transferring files back and forth, which means this thing has a full size SD card slot. Nice. Let me check what we get. Ow, and I just scratched myself. Mm. Um, someone asks, is this the version with the laser head? No. What? Someone asked whether that's the version with the laser head. Uh, it is not. I am afraid of lasers without an enclosure because you, you look into the thing once and you're blind. I, I, I don't want to use those. And you're also going to have some trouble importing it. Um, because again, open lasers are not something that is to be used by consumers like us. Okay, so what we get here is this configuration profiles. So we get Cura and Simplify 3D. I guess I'm just going to create a quick little uh, config in Prusa Slicer. Laser engraving, Dragonfly, Inkscape, and instructions for that. And read before use, testmodel.gcode. I have no idea what that is. Enough space for setting print and leave 200 millimeter gap around. Um, I think I can do that, barely. PLA 190 to 200, bed for uh, clean with alcohol. Cool. Assembly structure. Why is this open at an edge? Uh, okay. Flat desk and pull printed bed to the forefront. So forefront, I guess, is that way. Um, yes, well, <laughs> one thing I, I just saw uh, that I think is, hold on, I don't want to get you guys all nauseous. Where are you? Where is it? There it is. Uh, can you guys see that, that construction right there? 
So this is the uh, the y-axis belt. There's a It looks like it's it's some sort of a stud or a spacer um, with a thread through two, three, four bearings, two bearings with a flange on the other side here, and then two of these M4 hooks. Um, so these have a, a thread in the back. I, I can I can't really show you, but these two hooks and then two two thumb screws. This is kind of an interesting construction. Maybe I can show you like that. That's what that looks like. So, uh, interesting for sure. I, I can think of cleaner ways to tension a, a belt, but yeah. Ow. Weird. Whatever. <sighs> Shut up, Edge. Put the bottom frame on a flat desk and pull print to the forefront. Take out the M8 screws from the accessory bag. I think this is these two big ones. Looks homemade, yeah. I'm surprised by the amount of 3D printed parts here. Because it's, you know, so often you see manufacturers just going wild with, oh, we have all these, you know, uh, stamped metal and sheet metal parts and injection molded and whatnot. And these guys are just going against the trend. Um, as always, I don't mind 3D printed parts. It's just weird to see it on, on a machine again. Put X, Y frame onto bottom rail carefully. This is probably gonna topple over. Uh, make Z axis extrusion be a low, be against below two parts. So like that with the rail towards the front. Should be easy enough. Then tighten from the bottom. Okay, that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting because I can't actually get below the printer here. So is this better than the CR10? I don't know, I just unpacked it. We'll figure it out. Oh, I, I, I don't need this. So, let's see, I can get to the screw hole right there. That fits. Yeah. Okay. That works. That fits. Looks like it fits. Doesn't Prusa use a lot of uh, 3D printed parts as well? Yes, but with Prusa, it's a. With Prusa, it's part of the brand identity because I mean that's that's where they're from, right? They're they're still a rep wrap at their core and they're also using their machines to test their, well, that they're printing the 3D printed parts on their printer. So it's, it's quality control and, and just long-term testing for them as well. I don't think that they're doing this on the, on the Raptor here either. I'll, I'll have to check whether you can actually get the printed files, which is, you know, I don't think there's much value in it as in, oh yeah, you can now build your own because typically you do that because of cost and these kits often are a pretty cost effective way of getting these things. But it would really help with just getting, um, or uh, with getting modifications designed up and uh, adapting the printer to your own liking. Already dropping parts. Well, the assembly isn't really too straightforward so far because it's just, it's just all so bulky and unwieldy. Okay, you could probably print three full i3s on that bed in one go. Yeah, just use the use the plate. Isn't the isn't the Prusa, if you really want to, a single plate roughly? Not sure. So that should be tight, ish. Let me see. So there's a there's still an angle bracket here. I'm I'm wondering if that is just for 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 positioning it or if it's this one right here could probably barely make it out. So this bracket right here is still still around and there's nothing going into it. It's just kind of positioning the vertical rail. So, oh well. Long 10 to 15 minute assembly, yeah. 
Take out the electrical box from carton. Insert flat cable into socket. And make sure the clips snap in. So it's kind of like a RAM module. As well, insert it as well. Insert power cord into, okay. Let's do that. Oh yeah, one thing, one feature I forgot, which again, we're not gonna be able to really see is up here, up at the top, there's a, this is like 24 volt LED bar. It's like a, an under cabinet light. It's probably gonna be some, some warm white LED strip in here. Uh, it feels kind of random. I don't know. So if I could actually walk around this table, I would do that, but there's camera stuff on the other side. Does IKEA make an XL lac table? Um, maybe. Yeah, step files would be nice if that is true uh, for these 3D printed parts. Step files are, or, you know, design files, source files, as in SolidWorks, Fusion, uh, Inventor files that you can input into something. So. I'm gonna put this foot on here and one, two, I have no way of getting you guys a good shot of this connector. Like literally impossible. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking this just goes on the vertical beam here because there are hammer nuts in the back here. These should go in here. So I'm just gonna unpack this real quick and I'm hoping I'm not snapping this cable. No. My eyes hurt when I turn it on in the fully lit room, says uh, Johan. Okay, so I'll... <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for that. So yes, this is ball screws on the Z-axis. First time I've seen that on a 3D printer. Kind of interesting. Looks like the ECU connector on cards. Yeah, it's... Well, I mean, the ECU connector is typically a bit more robust. But yeah, there's a lot of pins going into it. And actually, what is in that? Why are there so many pins going from the from the main board out? Because we do have well, we do have the two LCD cables that go directly to the LCD, but this is this is just going to be control for power and step. This is this is I think this is way more pins than we need. Um, before I screw this down, let me just check the manual real quick. And tighten the electrical box onto aluminum extrusions by thumb screws. Okay, and then connect ground. So there's an extra ground connector. So this cable is kind of kind of interesting because it's like it's so in the open here. So tighten that up. It's nice that it does have uh, just has thumb screws. It's kind of convenient. First I saw these and I was like, why? Why this? This is Weird, nobody else is doing it, but it's actually kind of nice. You don't need to super securely tighten these because they, these don't really take any load. They're not structural. Come on, if this, if I could get this hammer up to flip, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Come on. So the problem with these hammer nuts is you, you insert them into the slot and then by rotating, there we go. By rotating the screw that holds it in, um, it's supposed to flip in the T-slot. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay, and then this ground goes over here supposedly, so. Does it include a screwdriver for that? It does include a flathead, which I guess is gonna work. What kind of rail system is the bed and the uh, and the y-axis? It's a supported. I don't know. I don't actually know what it's called, but this is like a. So I can I can zoom in again because we, we get a really nice view while I tighten up this uh, ground connection. It's like a supported six millimeter ground hardened rod thing with. Uh, like open builds, almost open build style rollers on here. So it's, well, it's, it's hardened steel rollers apparently too. So yeah, uh, to be honest, this ground screw, 
Like you're tightening the, uh, this is hard to do, like totally inverted, totally backwards. You're tightening the, uh, the crimped connector, the, the lug here, onto a anodized aluminum case, onto a black screw. This does not necessarily make good contact. Just pointing that out, but whatever. There's probably ground somewhere in these cables as well. Uh, someone just mentioned that this is uh, probably wired up for the laser module too, but yeah, the laser, laser module probably doesn't need all that many pins either. Fix the yellow kit. This is yellow and green. If it's yellow, it's wrong. It's yellow and green. Assemble LCD screen. Two flat cables into sockets at the back. Gray one is X1, black one to X2. Then tighten screen onto frame. Keep safe distance between X axis, left motor, and screen. Okay. Gray is one, black is two. And then just tighten it down somewhere up front. Okay. Why is there a VGA connector on the power supply? Because that's the connector that they use to uh, hook up the tool head. It's a bit of an odd choice because there's the, these connectors don't really have any... Well, they do have strain relief, but not as in like for repeated bending or anything. Ah. So I, I will question how well that's going to hold up over time because this cable is also well it's kind of soft it's kind of it's kind of flexible yeah but it's, it's i'm not sure if it's actually rated for repeated um bending back and forth uh is there any there is no wire management so these just lay flat on the table i guess i can zip tie them somewhere okay So again, thumb screw on the connector right here. This is, I'm liking these thumb screws. Just two less assembly, why not? So this goes up here somewhere. So make sure there's distance between the motor on the, on the X axis and the screen. So don't put it back there. I'm gonna put it relatively far forward just because I like being able to get to it. I should have connected it first, I guess. Uh. Oh, okay, now it's tightened down like way too well for me to, uh, to get it loose again. But you know, it's it's not like there's a cover or anything on the back. You can just uh, reach around and still plug them in. Two, one, two. There you go. Cool. Seems a bit tacked on. I don't know. The sheet metal part, it's kind of, it's kind of bouncy, but yeah. Whew. Why is this so much more than the CR10? Uh, again, it is in line with the pricing of the CR10 like XL because it is a lot larger. Uh, and it also comes with more features. However, whether it's actually good is going to be another question. But then again, the CR10 is also a value machine that kind of gets a break for just being so cheap. Okay, assembly. Assemble film and spool holder on top frame and tighten them by, okay, I'm just, I just checked. I'm not gonna be running into anything if I actually put that on top. So that just mounts to the back, okay. But is the price, price worth the cheap construction? Well, we're gonna have to see. I mean, it's not like the CR10 is the world's most fantastic printer either. So, yeah. Um, somebody's asking 3030 extrusion. This looks like 4040. It's a bit larger than that. So 
Toshiba Flash Air SD. Yes, that probably is going to work here as well. I'm thinking this thing runs Marlin. Um, because I, it didn't advertise 32-bit something something anywhere. It uses the standard LCD screen that you know all the printers use these days. Or the graphical one at least. Uh, so it's going to run Marlin. I'm going to have to see what Scott says about... Um, whether they, they are releasing source code or modifying it and not releasing stuff. How, how do I, how do, it's, uh, eh. <laughs> uh, let's do that then. There you go. This is uh, kind of hard to film. But yeah, it's probably just going to be standard Marlin with, uh, you know, a config to it. There is a zip tie point up here. It's not FormBot anymore, it's Vive Dino. Um, it's Vive Dino FormBot, they're calling it both. For some reason. Why is there a zip tie point up here? What do I need to zip into this? It's probably going to be homing over here, which means I want the spool mount a bit further towards this side. Yeah, today we do have a, a very small printer. <laughs> uh, this is kind of hard. But oh well. Um, spacing should be roughly okay, but you can always adjust this relatively easily. Two screws. Cool! It is Marlin. Okay, theory confirmed. What does 4040 extrusion mean? Um, f well, 4040, it's a colloquial term for how large the extrusion is. Um, these are 40 by 40 millimeters in their cross section. You can also get 4080, which is like the double section. Um, you can get 4120 and so on and so forth. The standard extrusions, these just for size, these are 2020 or 20 by 20 millimeters. And just to compare them to the size of these extrusions here, um, yes, they are puny in comparison. Cool. Yeah, I'll need a ladder for them if, if I ever get a bigger one. Um, this is specifically the one that is only, only 500 millimeters in the Z-axis. 700 millimeter one would have been uh, crazy because it, it, it's going to collide with my top camera there. So, let's see. Ah, the big one, the extruder. Take out extruder and tools. Three holes on extruder and carriage. There are three holes on extruder and carriage separately. Yes. Uh, found the holes. One, two, three holes right there. And there's one, two, three screws. I think that. Oh, yeah, this way. Yeah, one, two, three screws on the carriage as well. So these are going to line up. Screen cap. As below, okay, okay. Please don't tighten too much. I will try. Thank you, Chris, for the 10 bucks. Glad you're enjoying the stream. The, 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 the stream and glad you're making me forget how to talk. Is this, this is not gonna work, okay. But yeah, thank you so much for the, for the $10 tip. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I, I want to know, you, you guys, what's what's the format of this stream? I mean, streams are always kind of a mixed bag when it comes to uh, feedback. Just because they're a different format than what I usually do. So what would you like, what would you guys like to see for live streams? Should I change anything? Do you like it just the way it is? Uh, is it just something that you watch if you're like up for it? If you're, uh, if you don't have anything else to do, do you just play it in the background? Yeah. Let me know in chat. Ah, and Scott from the Marlin firmware developer, or the Marlin firmware developer, Scott is also in chat. Marlin has Raptor configs. Okay, so I'm, I feel like they're, are they contributing or are they open sourcing? Let me know, man. Uh, the extruder. So questions about the extruder and the hot end while you guys are, um, you know, we do have about a 20-second delay, even though this is on low latency here. Um, 
there were some questions about the extruder about the hot end it is pre-assembled so the way you see it right now this is it comes like that you only have to attach it to the carriage and the hot end that they're using is a v6 clone uh, an e3d v6 clone but it is not it does not look like the all metal version it looks like the version that has uh, PTFE through the heat break, which means it is only safe to around 240 degrees Celsius and not the 350 degrees that they're advertising. Kind of a shame, but I guess you can always upgrade with genuine parts. Put the camera a bit further away for a few, full view angle. I don't have the space. I, I literally don't have the space to put the cameras any further away. Like that one's mounted to the light post. This one I can I can kind of move maybe a bit further away, but there's a screen right there with chat and uh, Streamlabs. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and this one is already a, a wide angle lens, so it's it's tough. Random, random printer builds, yeah. Good stuff, okay. I'm trying to read chat here. But that's, Step number one, don't tighten the screws too much. So that is the first, uh, what is that? Cool. Where is my Explorer? Gotta close that. Where's my, there's my USB drive. Connect wires. Oh, wiring. It's the part about 3D printers that I love the most. At least it's all pre-wired. Some notice would be good. Um, yeah, the thing with um, giving earlier notice for live streams is if I post it on Twitter, if I post it on YouTube, people are gonna get... I just noticed we didn't put in the uh, locking washers, but these usually don't do much anyways. Um, if I give earlier notice, then people will come to the stream page and be like, ah, but uh, why can't I watch it now? I wanna watch it now. It's the same thing with YouTube premieres that you do or that he announced too early on. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I always do like spontane, more or less spontaneous live streams because they, the format does kind of match that. And I don't want to like over announce them because it's, it's a live stream, right? It's not like a super highly produced video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's a pre-wired bit of wire right there that probably goes to the distrib distributor box down there. It plugs into the motor. So, I mean, this is so far all pretty straightforward, I'd say. Because it's not like there's four identical connectors anywhere that may fit into the same thing. Lacing to get a samurai armor while well, watch listen tonight. Okay, that's a that's a fun thing to do. <laughs> nice. Motor cables, got that on the other side as well. So there's another motor cable back here. I need like some sort of robotic camera arm that I can just just send to positions and say, oh yeah, please get over here and then film from this angle. Maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> MKBHD seems to like those. 3D printer without auto bed leveling, yeah. Um, 3D printers I think should have some sort of auto bed leveling, especially at this size. Like if it's a bit smaller, okay, you can, you can manually level it, it's okay. But with this size bed, you're not gonna get anything flat. I've tried, like I've, I've looked into whether it's possible to actually get milled surfaces that are guaranteed to be flat, to be flat enough. Uh, so that your first layer is going to stick and it's just Just nobody's nobody's making those and if if you do get those made Like it's not going to survive in shipping if it's just that thin so you'd need something really thick and really solid to get a guaranteed flat surface um, so looks like There's glue stick on here. So auto bed leveling with this is not about the or with this size printer is not about getting the tilt and and pan and whatever the, the other axes are uh, out of the bed though it does have it does have manual leveling the auto bed leveling really takes out warp so if it's uh if it's higher up towards the edges versus the center that can be taken care of with uh auto bed leveling like this 
<laughs> live streams more highly produced than most YouTubers create regular videos. Well, yeah. Um, then again, my, I'm, I'm hoping or I'm trying for uh, regular videos that are, you know, better produced than regular content too. Or the regular content from, ah, get, get out of here, from other creators. So we did that, we did the two motor cables, connect LED light cable, oh, you can just unplug it if you don't like it. Cool, and connect DB cable to extruder. And then I guess the bungee cord goes towards the top, ooh. Okay, so they're still using a different style connector there. So let's do the LED light, that's back here, that is a bit too close to comfort to the coupler back here. Yeah, that's, it's so hard to, to get around this printer. Like that. Yeah, Johan is, is mentioning uh, their Raptor is about 0.3 higher in the corners than in the center. So yes, mesh leveling is definitely a must for that. Use a floor tile for the bed, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, on the topic of the uh, video on the Raspberry Pi 4 benchmarks, I did kind of screw up in that video. Not a lot of people noticed, but it's it's not... I feel really bad about it, but it's actually not that big of a deal. I always thought I had the Raspberry Pi 3, because I, I, I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. I always thought it was a Raspberry Pi 3, but it was actually a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, so, uh, thankfully, the, the performance difference between the Raspberry Pi 2 and the 3 is not that big. It's like 30% faster, uh, the 3, that is. But, what? but the, uh, it's, it's hard when you notice those things after you've already published the video. So, uh, kind of, I felt kind of shitty about that. But yeah, happens. It's just part of the game. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make my, my opinion and my takes on the Raspberry Pi 4 any less true. It's still a really great and, and really high performance setup or, or board that you can get. How much left on the assembly? I don't know, it, it feels like it's almost done. Let's get a decent print speed with a 10 kilogram mil aluminum heated bed. Yes, that's the other thing too. Um, with, with auto bed leveling, you can go with these thinner heated beds because, well, you don't need to worry about them being totally, absolutely flat. I wonder how that is supposed to be, or how that's supposed to just go on here because it's... So this is the uh, the filament sensor. It's the same one that you've seen on the Monoprice Delta Pro. So it's just a, this is really just a simple switch in here. Uh, in fact, if you push through a piece of filament, you're going to be able to hear the switch click actually goes this way. That's too big of a piece of filament. Okay. Anyways, there's a micro switch in here. There's, there's nothing really special about it. So I guess this just lines up like that because that's the filament hole up here. So you just manually thread it through the sensor and then thread it into the, uh, into the extruder after that. Two hundred point filament. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dum -dum -dum. Cool. So we did that. Meanwhile, fix the DB cable. So where do we attach the? What? 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 Okay. So this thing. Oh, just keep on spinning. So these are the, that, that looks dangerous kind of, um, spool mount up top, it's already mounted, and then this bungee that holds the X, where the, the extruder cable set just goes up here. It doesn't clip in, it's just a, it's a, just a ring that sits in here. Okay, okay, I guess that, guess that works. We'll move the table around. So the thing is, it uses trinamic drivers. This thing has trinamic drivers which makes me think it should be quiet, um, even though it is pushing a lot of weight around. We'll see, we'll see. So over, t over top, hold on, I did that wrong. So this is supposed to go over the top of this extrusion. Okay, there, always follow the manual. 
It's important. And that's wires. So far, so good. Set C offset is the next one, which makes me think I will 36 point bilinear mesh bed leveling. Much more precise than ordinary auto bed leveling. So that makes me think that I will now need to plug it in. I am scared. Oh, I should just click, whatever. I am scared, but let's, let's go for it. Um, I don't think I'll actually need to plug in the danger red wire for the heated bed yet. But just in case, I'll just get it ready. Do I have an extension cord somewhere? Because I'm all out of sockets. Where did I just put that? There it is. So you do need two plugs for this printer, or at least they're using two plugs. There we go. Uh, what's printing size and what does the printer cost? Um, I guess I should just put that in as a permanent overlay. The printer is 900 euros shipped uh, from China plus imports if you're ordering it uh, outside of China, which you probably are, since you're watching this on YouTube. Um, you can get it from some European distribu distributors as well. Um, but the printing size is 400 by, as it says in the thumbnail, by the way, if you've seen that, uh, 400 by 400 by 500 millimeters, which is rather large. So, uh, yes, I, I've, I've seen the question about camera on Raspberry Pi 4. I will try and look into that. There we go. That's what I wanted. So power is plugged in. <sighs> Two plugs. There you go. Um, Okay, Beal Touch did something. Marlin on the screen, Raptor 2 ready. Okay, whoo, <laughs> that worked. Uh, the bed is 220 volt AC. Yes, actually, we can see that in the top view. Actually, you can see it right now. This right here, this is an SSR. It, mm, yeah, that that is not, that's not too spec um, or not too, uh, our standards, let's put it like that, to code if you're in the US. There is a cover on here. Well, hold on, this is the low voltage side then. Okay, so there is a code on, uh, there is a little cap over the high voltage side. So yeah, I guess I guess that's all right. Keep pulling out this end cap. So yeah, there is a pretty beefy SSR in here. It's a CDG1-1DA slash 40A, so 40 amp, I assume. 40 amp. SSR. I'm hoping it's not a 40 amp heated bed because that would blow the fuse, but um, yeah. Fire extinguisher is about 20 steps that way. And my TV is turning off. Fantastic. TV, stay on. All right, um, how, do I, how do I get to this and still show you? I guess with that we can, yeah, yeah, cool. This is a log logistical challenge, to be honest. Uh, BL touches and printing, uh, blinking. Yeah, so it, it did extend twice. Smell like? It smelled like. It, it, it sounded like. Sorry, mixing up my senses here. <sighs> cool. Motion, auto home. Let's get this thing moving. No SD card, motion. It is surprisingly quiet. I am I'm happy with that. So there is a bit of resonance on the bed. Ah, and when it's yeah, when it's moving a bit faster, it's uh, it does make some noise. It has some vibrations. But in all fairness, I do have to point out that this is like the IKEA style table, which means it's cardboard or honeycomb on the inside. So it does kind of amplify any vibrations that you get. So, okay, that worked. So it does make it slightly louder, but yeah, so far so good. Did home, perfect. Um, 
Someone keeps telling me about check behind the screen of the printer. There's a full size SD card slot there. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, there is. But there's also a full size SD card slot here. So that's that's interesting. So this is the main board package. There's an SD card slot there and a USB. And there's also a SD card slot right over here. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see which one is the one that actually works. Move Z. Please remember that value as Z. So we are at Z 6.5 right now. Put an A4 paper between nozzle and bed, rotate knob anti-clockwise to move down Z axis until it can pass through only one paper. Cool, and then remember. Isn't there, shouldn't we have some sort of an assistant for that by now? looking for an A4 piece of paper. Shipping information, okay. I guess that's, that's usable. So we now just do the paper calibration, basically. So 6.5, we move, we move axis. This is hard to read from this angle. And we move by 0.1, and we do kind of need about 6.5 millimeters. It's interesting that you still need to, there's a, is there stuff on a nozzle? Uh, it's a weird nozzle, it's not formed exactly the way that uh, E3D nozzles are formed. There we go. Do a ground shake make things are grounded? Mm, okay. Don't ground, ground check it like Angus did. So 0.8 is where we need to be. And then how do we set this? Finally calculate the sit by the wa set one minus five for lift up sub what? What? So, so ba what? <laughs> minus Z1 minus five minus C2, what? <laughs> How are they trying to, to get me to calculate the offset here? Okay, I, I'm gonna need a calculator for this. So they want minus Z1. So Z1 was there's no Z1, but Z1, I assume, is going to be... Okay, remember SD2. Z1 is going to be the 6.5. Then we do minus 5, minus, and then the second one is 0.8. So we had negative 0.7. Okay. 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 I guess. I guess. Well. So now what would we do? Uh, configuration advanced settings. No. Uh, configuration advanced settings, probe Z offset. So we're at we need to get to a negative 0.7. So let's read some chat right here. Y5, I don't know. Um, yeah, I should probably warm it up. Well, the thing is, if I probe it warm, it's going to have the same offset between the probe and the nozzle, so... Unless there's some booger on the nozzle, which I'm hoping it's not. Choose motion auto home again to keep safe distance between nozzle and bed. So store settings. Store settings, there we go. Okay. And then it's telling me to do auto home again. Okay. I, I did not understand what I did, but okay. 
What's the laser's power? Um, this thing does not have, the one that I do have does not have the laser unit, but typically it's somewhere around like 500 milliwatts, two watts. So like an engraving uh, laser typically, you, you could be, you're gonna be cutting foam with it at most. Um, but like I mentioned, I'm kind of scared of the uh, of the lasers because uh, eyesight is kind of it's kind of important to me, you know. So, what I'm why why is the I I still don't understand what I did with the offset. Uh... We'll see, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see whether we need some special start G-code to take that offset out again. I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, motion auto him, oh, let's oh, keep this, okay. So, start printing. Uh, cut the filament, change filament, yeah, yeah, yeah. Print paused, purge more. Insert SD card into electrical box. So they're saying it's not to insert it into the screen, but into the SD card. So, okay, so what we just did with the Z offset is basically irrelevant because we need to set it again in the first print anyways. Hope you enjoy, hope you will enjoy Raptor 2.0 very much. Okay. So yeah, it, I mean, this looks, the distance it's showing me right now looks realistic, 5.7 millimeters. Uh, you, you know what it is, it's, uh, it's because it homes, no, what, why do we, why do we do five? Because the, don't ask me, okay. I'm, I'm thinking it's so it, it ended up at 6.5 millimeters above the bed. Why are you blinking? Ah, because you're, you're off. Okay. It ended up at 6.5 millimeters above the bed. Then we lowered it to be... Yeah, I, I think I, think I kind of know what's going on here, but... Outside of my, my capacity right now. So we should be able to just do a simple... Um, a simple Prusa slicer setup, I think. Uh, I don't have Cura installed right now, and I don't want to use Simplify 3D, which I also don't have installed, so that would be a pain to, to set up. <sighs> cool. Let me know what I should be printing. Um, I'm gonna be setting up a real quick Prusa slicer profile. Let me know what I should actually print. Um, uh, I mean, there's always the option of doing the 3D Benchy or some, some drag and frog thing, but it should be some relatively quick print, please, because, uh, you know, maybe about an hour. So I'm, I'm open to your suggestions. Push slicer. I guess we should test a bit before I start a print. Let's do that right now. Uh, what is this extension cord rated for? Doesn't say, cool. 16 amps, I guess that should be okay. Let's see what we can do. Temperature. It's probably gonna smell somewhat. 135, they said it would go to, look at the ba, the ba, ba, the ba, the ba. It's maxed out at 135, they said it was 350. Actually, let's check the nozzle. Test cube, no, I'm not printing a test cube. So the nozzle is at 345, which I would never run on this printer because it has PTFE in the heat break, which means you're probably gonna be dead after you run that. Uh, so nozzle probably goes to, you know, safely 240-ish. Heated bed is already warming up. That's good. Vase mode, oh yeah, vase mode would be nice. No Benchy, no Benchy. I'm not gonna be printing a cube. Adelinda, I, yeah, Casey, sorry, the Adelinda is probably gonna be too long. I'm looking at my Prusa Adelinda's over here, but 
Yeah, I, I, the, the only reason I got away with printing the Elalinda on the Prusa print or on the Prusa unboxing is because I, I assembled a full printer while that was going. So that's that's too long. I'm going to be doing a vase, suggest vases. Uh, give me Thingiverse thing IDs if you can. Uh, links are not going to work in chat. Thingiverse link IDs or uh, you imagine names. So heated bed is heating up. That is nice. It's actually, it feels like it's heating up relatively quick. Let me see. 57 within two minutes. That's really good. That's the advantage of having an AC powered heated bed. So it feels like there's no buzz on the frame, which is, which is good, which probably indicates that it's grounded. Yeah. How to get vase mode on the newest Cure version? Probably the same as on the, in the old versions. Uh, send me your thing ideas. I'll be right back. I'll get a multimeter. Just to check ground. Yeah, yeah. If the printer catches fire, uh, let me know. But I'm I'm not gonna see chat. So. <laughs> yeah, the smell is real. Um, it's the typical adhesive smell and there's a lot of adhesive around here YouTube why are you blocking these perfect thing at ease uh, you guys work it out amongst yourself I'm, I'm... So I'm gonna go over to resistance here and check between some ground, well, I'll use the ground over here and the frame and 85 ohms on the x-axis. Yeah, one ohm on the frame, so that's good. So the x-axis does have some resistance somewhere. Ah, Stefan is here. Ah, Stefan is here. Hey, man. <laughs> Cool. So the frame is grounded and I should be safe. There's been a bit of discussion on how these frames should be grounded and whether they should be, but um, I'm, I feel safer with a grounded frame, especially if you have uh, an AC heated bed. So 103, that is actually really fast. Oh yeah, and you can you can feel the, the heat coming off of it. Uh, Stefan, that, that, might, that might actually be a really good bed for you to, to cook stuff on. Dirty Harry suggested something. Uh, the heat wave. Give me a Chrome window. Okay, that, yeah, I can, I can, I can live with that. I can live with that and we can do vase mode. Let me check what case is adjusting here. Oh yeah, Chrome's now hiding. Ah, ah I'll go with this one. This one looks really vaseable, really nice. So, thing files. Uh, one, two, three, is there a difference? Shell, okay, solid. I'll do the solid. Cool, processor. Let's set up a printer. So we want none. We don't want an SL1. Well, I do want an SL1, but. Wrap wrap, yes, rectangle, and we're at 400 by 400. A cool Prusa slice, it doesn't even show it that big. Yeah, heated bed is, is more than powerful enough. Nozzle at 0.4, filament is 1.75, yes. Extrusion, 200, yeah, and then let's do 55 on the bed. That does not matter for custom printers. And yeah, there we go. Let's just double check. Um, yeah, I don't know, Prusa printers defaults for custom printers are kind of weird sometimes. First layer height, yes. 
primitives, three, spiral vase, one, that's okay, solid vase, zero, three, that's good. Aligned, yeah. No infill. And yeah, it, it comes with stars default infill for new printers, which I don't know, Prusha, fix this stuff. That looks good. Filament is good. Cooling. We do want cooling. And we do actually want the advanced settings. Where is my advanced settings? There's my advanced settings. Give me all the settings. Yep, so fan settings are good. Filament type PLA. So that's an extruder. Two millimeters retraction sounds about right. And I also don't want any acceleration control that's in here. So this is all off, which means the printer itself is controlling accelerations at the manufacturer's. It, it's just gonna use it at the manufacturer's defaults, which is what I want. These speeds are normal. These are actually usually good. That looks good, cool. That looks good. Custom G code. We don't. We don't really. Well, I guess we do need a. We're just going to do a manual mesh leveling before we start because we, we need to do that anyways. Unless G twenty eight also does. Hmm. Ooh. Also does mesh leveling. Uh, I'm. I'm. St I'm. Hold on. I'm noticing something here. Uh, <laughs> the. Uh, the heated bed. So this is at one thirty five. Supposedly this goes to 150 and you can definitely see that there are all there are small bubbles forming in the adhesive. Probably not that visible on this camera, but the adhesive seems to be bubbling up slightly. There's like an even distribution of bubbles just everywhere. Um, I don't think this, this is okay to 135 because if this bubbles up like that, it's not... I mean, it's not cool. So, well, in fact, it is rather warm. Let me turn that down just slightly. We are going to be printing at 55, so let's try that. So yeah, the bubbling is not, not great, not great. Uh, G28 resets it, yeah, okay, so let's do G29 then. Uh, tw 29, there we go. Cool, that should be good. And that should be all we need. Now, Thingware's file. Did I download one? I did download one. Don't want to show you guys my whole downloads folder because there's there's nothing in there. I don't worry about it. Why is this not on background processing? Give me background processing. There we go. I think it doesn't apply until I actually redrop something. Yes, snowy slicing. One ten or less. Um, well, the thing is, the thing is the printer is advertised with 150 degrees on the heated bed and 350 degrees on the hot end. And the hot end, I can guarantee you, only does 240. Uh, the heated bed, apparently... This is aluminum. This is directly coupled to the, to the heater. Ow. Uh, the, but that's weird. This is like a massive, so in the center it's going to be cool, but on the, on the edges it's actually connected to... Ah, damn it. On the edges it's actually connected to the bed. I don't know when... Is this mechanically doing anything? This is just a... It's just a bumper. This is just extra weight. This really doesn't do anything. So I guess this is a, a candidate for taking off. Yeah, on the edges here, it's mechanic. It's connected to the uh, to the heated bed, so that does get hot. Ow. <laughs> okay. We sliced. Uh, we are two hours fifty eight minutes. I will scale this down slightly because that's too large. Ooh, where's my perspective? There's my perspective. Let's do like the fifty millimeters. Because three hours is too long. It gets hot over time. No, it, it instantaneously gets hot because it's it's literally connected to the uh, to the heated bed structure. Show you this, then you will see that 
right here on this edge, this black part is directly screwed to the heated bed. So that, that, does, that does get hot. So this aluminum bumper up front here, again, kind of unnecessary. It's just, it's not doing anything. It's really just decoration. Oh yeah, it says wrapped there too. Ooh. Yeah. You can keep a cold pizza. You can keep whole pizza warm. Yeah, I guess you could even bake a whole pizza on that. Oh, barely. Keep it more or less dried. So 32 minutes. Um, sounds good. Export. I will save it onto the USB drive. Fuel arrays. Oh, did I? Was this actually? Hold on. Oh shit, I'm not allowed to print this. I'm not allowed to show this. I'm hoping uh, Vertex is going to forgive me this one because non-commercial actually means that I I can't show it on stream because this is, you know, me earning a living somehow on YouTube. Uh, so, whew. Uh, hoping, hoping I'll get away with this one. Please don't sue me. G-code file exported. USB drive eject. I still wish for card readers that would like physically eject cards. And then there's a slot somewhere. Oh, well, hold on. You guys said there was a slot on the screen, but the thing is, yes, there is a slot on the screen, but it's not, it's not accessible. Like it's covered up on the side. There, there's a there's a slot right behind this thing here, and I cannot show you that because. Heavy? Yeah. There's a slot here and it's covered up. You would need to cut a slot into the side of the screen to use it. Um, so I shall use the back side of the printer. Cool. Don't touch the hotbed when it's heated. Well, yeah. The Print from SD. So we're printing the. Oh, we we need we need we forgot we forgot one thing. Uh, we need filament. And I was gonna use this one. I was gonna use the the protopasta. Well, fittingly, not sponsored by protopasta. I was gonna use the protopasta uh, burnt orange or the tangerine orange metallic gold. But it's not going to be riding well on the on the spool mount because the spool mount is just these bearings and well, I could put them closer together, but it's a cardboard spool and I'm kind of afraid that it's going to fall off. Well, let's try. Let's try. Do the feet have rubber insulation? Um, they are rubber feet. They are screwed down rubber feet. Zip. You can see them right down there. So this is a rubber slug that is screwed to the frame, to the frame, to the profiles. Uh, Ali is saying he, th he thinks it's a V6 hotend. It's not a V6 hotend. Well, it's a V6 cloned hotend with a modified heat break with the, what AliExpress sellers like to call the improved version of the V6, which means they are taking away the core functionality of the V6 of being an all-metal hotend and they're adding the Teflon, the non-all-metal element back into it and making it a low-temperature hotend. So it's a hotend inspired by the V6, but using the V6 name for this is, uh, I don't know, inappropriate kind of, because it's not. I'm hoping this is roughly correctly spaced now yes it is okay so there we go i'm hoping that's gonna ride well enough i guess it I guess it will okay led light should be on if you didn't forget to plug it what did i oh the led light you're right you're right there should be an led light up top um why is this not on? It is plugged in back here. Yeah, and I can see the I can see the cable move. So there's the plug. There's the plug back he 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 back here, which you cannot see because it's too freaking large. And it's plugs in down here. It's the only plug where it goes. Oh, now it's on. Okay. Ugh. 
Ah. That's some ugly light. That's some bluish white. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll just leave it on for now. Looks like a. I don't know. It's like a morgue or something. Ugh. It's controlled from the screen. That would be nice. Cool. Uh, we need filament. We need filament. So let's do filament. So this is the sensor. You just slide your uh, your filament through, and you can hear the click actually. I'm hoping. So yeah, the nozzle, as someone, someone who's pointing it out, Darkly Spectre is pointing out the nozzle is not an E3D nozzle. I can confirm that it does not look like the E3D design. Um, because it is steeper, it is the, the, like, the cheap look nozzle. It looks like there's something blocking the filament. Let me see if we can get a uh, filament load procedure here. Uh, preheat PLA. Oh, because it's because the nozzle is not hot. Okay, okay. I thought I had preheated that, but it's just at uh, 44 degrees. So obviously nothing's gonna go in there. Print the diffuser. Well, there's already a diffuser on here. So if I take, there should be. Yeah, you, you can take this off, uh, and you can see the LED strip in there. It's like a rigid LED bar. So these are just, this is just an aluminum profile and a simple plastic diffuser over top. Nothing special. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is if you, if you have a clone V6 or something in there, it should be relatively easy to upgrade the parts. Uh, I don't know who just mentioned it. Uh, yeah, Darkly mentioned you would need to modify the BL Touch sensor or the mount for the BL Touch. I guess that wouldn't be too hard. Just put a spacer in there, just move it slightly further up or down. I can't. Oh, well, okay. So it, it, you could easily move it further down, but not further up. Though it does look like it's. No, what, what is it doing with the filament? It's unloading. Why are, you, why are you unloading filament? Oh, because it's still in sensor? Okay. Insert filament? Why are you heating again? Okay, there we go. We're loading. Loading. Hey, folks, Bilo just became a YouTube member. Thank you for that and welcome. And thank you, Michael, for the 20 euro tip. <laughs> Fun printing the vase. Time for dinner. Enjoy your dinner. It's going to be a hopefully relatively quickly uh, printing vase at 32 minutes. Oh, we'll see. Filament denied. Uh, so there's black stuff coming out. And I'm thinking that's the same black filament that we saw oozing out the top of the heater block. Uh, and we want to purge more. Are you, yeah, slowly purging more? Rainer Zufall is saying, compared to Prusa, this doesn't seem like good value. Why does it cost a thousand bucks? Because it is, uh, it is like four times as large as Prusa. I mean... Here's a Prusa, here's a Mark III. It's just, I, I, I think this comparison is kind of, you know, I'm not this small. Like I, I don't make this printer look big, right? <laughs> this printer makes me look small. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a lot bigger printer and it on paper it has some of the same features like it has a filament sensor it has the trinamic drivers it has a pi bed though it is not a flex bed um which may actually be an issue on a printer this large just getting parts off it's still not clean so yeah okay extruder is skipping why is that 
It is feeding filament though. I'm thinking it's just, yeah, 180 degrees. Why are you at 180? Who set up this profile, man? Put the Mark III on the bed. Yeah, I did that when we started the scream, at the scream, the stream. You can scroll back to that, but right now the bed is hot and I don't want to toast the Mark III um, because I, I think there's wires that could get in touch with it and this one doesn't have the feet on it. So I don't want to put the Mark III on there right now. So filament is loaded. Just pull out the little filament tree right there. So that is looking good. Continue. Waiting for print to resume. Well, there's there's no print going on. Print a life size, Tom. Can you make a picture with your thermal cam? Uh, remind me again when the print is going and I'll grab the thermal camera from upstairs real quick. Julia Vase. Okay. Here we go. Print is going. So this should be doing the home, which it is doing right now. Then it should be doing a full G29 bed scan with 36 bed points. So that's still the auto home. Let's doing it again. Kind of worried about the plastic tip on that BL touch. And then, if I'm quick enough, I can grab that booger. <laughs> nope. Okay. I'm gonna do 36 pro points. That's gonna take a while. So the Z height calibration we're gonna be doing in a second once the print is going. I'll probably need to restart the print anyways if it's too far off, if, if it doesn't stick or over squeeze. Um, it may need to, uh, I may need to restart it. But yeah, while that is calibrating and while that's going, uh, I'm gonna go upstairs real quick and grab the thermal camera. Be right back. I wanna put on the be right back music, but like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have that available. Okay. Uh, I'll mute myself real quick and I will grab the thermal camera and hopefully before the, the probing finishes, I'll be back. Where did I put that thing? It's somewhere. I see it. I see it in front of me. You know that that moment when you when you can visualize the thing and you see it sitting there. I have it down here. Damn it! It's a four hundred dollar camera. Uh, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. Okay. I wish I could have shown you, but not an option right now. What I did notice when I walked back into this room right now was that the air does smell. This adhesive on the bed does give off quite the stench. Um, it's probably a combination of the adhesive on the PEI, which is now bubbling up, and the adhesive on the uh, heated bed on the bottom, which is the same stuff, the same 416 MP uh, 3M-ish adhesive so yeah is it in the podcast space oh possibly good point well it, it definitely isn't there because I, I last used it there uh why is it doing 36 points because hold on where's my case lights tune come on why did this 
Thanks for your great work. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Decker. It's De Decker, Decker, STP. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I got distracted here. Okay, so the uh, print. Yes, so I, I, I kind of hit pause, but this is looking good. This is looking like it's uh, like it's there. Did we swap filament? Oh, I swapped filament. Cool. Um, but yes, Deckard SP, thank you for the tip through Streamlabs. Very much appreciated. <sighs> cool. So I guess I slipped on the on the dial there and actually managed to uh, swap filament. But this should keep on printing. But the, um, the height is good. The height is actually very good and it is sticking really well. How solid is the printhead? Can you wiggle it? Yes, while it's doing its thing, I can wiggle it. So there is very little wiggle going on here. So the, uh, the open builds wheels are pretty well tensioned. There is no slip on these. So yes, no wiggle, no, no, no problem. Uh, what is it doing? Changing filament. I accidentally clicked that. So, yep, no. Do I really need to? There we go. Mm. AliExpress link returns no result. It should. I checked it just a minute ago. Um, now, what's interesting about this view that you guys are getting right now is the massive fan ring that's kind of covering up the entire view of the print. So. I think I'm going to restart this one because it didn't load uh, the filament all the way. Does it turn off the motors? Yes, it does. So yeah, you can see it didn't load it far enough. See, offset could be a bit lower. Maybe slightly. I mean, using semi-translucent filament maybe isn't the perfect thing for this. Oh god, it's going to do the G29 again. Well. Better do that than having a, uh, a filling print. Look at your X belt. Two pulleys stacked on the left end of the... Where? Two pulleys stacked. Um, left end. So this is a tall pulley. The, the one that you're seeing right there. This is a much taller pulley than it needs to be. This is like one for a 15 millimeter belt. Um, yeah, that's weird. Why would it, why would they use a pulley that's that big? Can you see it from that side? Yeah, you can kind of see it sticking out, but that pulley is way larger than it needs to be. On the other side of the, of the axis, they're actually using a toothed idler, which is nice. So that kind of keeps that, that bumpiness uh, down that you get when you have just a smooth idler. So, and on the, on the Y-axis, there's actually a, a pulley that's decently sized. So this is a wider belt, this is like a 10 millimeter one, where the, the belt actually fits really well on top. On the back, which, I guess, I guess we, can, we can actually see. Uh, on the back here, what I'm, what I'm just noticing is there's zip ties going around the, uh, the, the aluminum profiles, the 4040 profiles, which seems a bit unprofessional. Can I, can I like, maybe that's better. Yeah, zip ties around the profiles, which looks unprofessional because it's like that there's mounts that you can use. Uh, this is like what you do when you, when you print or you build a printer just uh, in your backyard or in your garage. But there are better solutions to mounting your 230 volt um, cable. Could you please show the Y belt idler in detail? Somehow it looks strange. You can actually jump back to the uh, section in the stream where I do show that in detail because it is, yes, it is strange. I think this is like the, the most detail y. Nope. 
There we go. This is like the most detail that I can show it to you in. So it's two thumb nuts. Then it's two of these like loop bolts. I don't know what they're called in English, sorry. And then a, like an extender, like a threaded tube going through four bearings. It is weird. It is definitely very weird. So yeah. Okay, sorry that you guys have to watch the, uh, the probing again. So, yeah, I do have the, um, the Elegoo Mars in the background here, which is blocked by the massive electronics box. But I do have the Elegoo Mars in the background here. Um, I've been using, I've been trying to use that for, for a bit these last few weeks. It's been in this very space, which is why I've not filmed the Raspberry Pi review in this space, because it was occupied with resin stuff. That stuff tends to take over a space really quickly because everything's going to be covered in resin. Uh, I wiped this table down with IPA, with isopropyl alcohol, probably three or four times. Um, you can't really move it because it's, it's stuff sloshing around, so yeah. Um, with the Elegoo resin, this thing is actually relatively nice. It's like, again, it's, it's a very bare bone system because it's, the printer itself with a resin process is only like such a small puzzle piece of the entire thing. Um, with the Elegoo resin, it's good. With the Wanhao resins that I used before that, it's just absolute garbage. It is unusable, but the Elegoo resin much better. I don't know if the, uh, the Wanhao resin was just bad or, or off or something, but just didn't get any good prints with it. So yeah, with the Elegoo, I can finally put it through its paces. I don't have any printed resin prints or pieces down here because they're, they're outside in the sun. But yeah, um, these machines are back in, in stock in some European countries. But uh, apparently not in the US. It's a bit of Z-wobble. That's the only thing that I'm noticing right now. Other than that, it's, 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 it's all right. Uh, what? Yeah, so they, they are available in, in Spain, but also in Germany. Um, I've been seeing them in stock. What nozzle am I going to be putting on this printer? Um, apparently, apparently I'm going to be sticking to the stock nozzle because you guys can probably see that better than I can. Um, didn't, I didn't set up a, a B camera zoom or an A, a camera zoom. Uh. Because apparently the, the nozzle that they're using is not two standard sizes. So I do have a little baggie of nozzles here. So these are, you know, you can, you can also get these if you want to. These are the standard E3D clone nozzles. Um, I bought myself a uh, full pack of sizes. I'd used them yet. But this is like everything from 0.25 to uh, like 1.2 millimeters. So you can get like the, the clone nozzles in the original E3D geometry, but this one does not use the original E3D geometry. So replacement nozzles are not going to fit without changing how the offset works with the, with the Beetle Touch apparently, as chat has pointed out. Thank you for that. But yeah, I'll need to see if I can figure something out here because using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle non-volcano um, non 2 is just an absolute chore with this size print bed. Like I've, did I put the, no, I still have the, the CR10 here. I can put that back on the table for comparison. Ah, it doesn't need that much space. Even on the CR10, like I, I don't bring out the CR10 that often. I don't use it that often. Look at that, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, it's tiny. I don't bring out the CO10 that often because for smaller stuff, I just throw it on the Mark III's and then like, I'm happy with that. But for the times that I, that, that I do use the CO10, it's usually print times that are measured in days. It's usually somewhere in like three, four, five day print times whenever I actually need this large of a printer. So that's already kind of limiting. Now, with this, with this thing being 10 centimeters larger, which is math. Uh, 
it's not it's not twice as large as in like the surface but I think in, in volume, like if you fill out the print volume, you can do twice the volume easily. So at that point, you're gonna be measuring print times in weeks. So not the best starting point for, you know, making use of a printer this big. So you would need to, um, to at least put a larger nozzle on it, if not put a volcano on it for those really thick and juicy layers. Because if we're honest, like if you have a print that is like decent size, if, if you have something that is about, even the, the size of this water bottle, like a 0.8 millimeter layer is not gonna be that noticeable versus something that's really small where you will be able to see ridges and layers much more. So 0.8, yes, that's, 0.8 nozzle might work, but it, I'm, I'm afraid that the block is not gonna be, the short block is not gonna be able to heat up the filament quickly enough for, uh, you know, for it to actually make use of it. Ah, uh, there's a printable mount. Satgod is saying there's a printable mount for the Raptor to use a BMG and a V6. Uh, does that also work with the Raptor 2? That would be interesting. The print is going wrong, nozzle jumping. The print is actually looking rather good. Um, if I'm if I'm totally honest. So if you zoom in a bit more, then you can kind of see the print poking out every now and then. And I can zoom in even more because of the man. Oh no, but that one's, shit, that one's warped. Ah, let's just stick with that. Uh, Casey's asking, is the stock nozzle 0.4 or larger? The stock nozzle is 0.4 which is ridiculous on this size printer. And it's also 0.4 on the CR, on the CR10. I'm, yeah, CR10 is also 0.4, I think. Um, but I think those you can get with a larger nozzle if you, if you want to. What speed is that? Um, it's probably limited by layer time, but I'm thinking it's around 60 millimeters a second. Though with accelerations and stuff, that surely is slower than what we set in the slicer. So how loud is the printer? Um, how loud is the printer? Motion is actually really good. Motion is fine. Motion using the Trinamic TMC 2208 drivers is kind of quiet. You do hear a bit of vibration because this desk is, again, is, is that IKEA sandwich panel, which is a, a thin panel on top and then that honeycomb on the bottom or in, in the center. So it does really, you know, you can hear how loud that is. Uh, it does kind of amplify vibrations. The thing that I'm hearing right now though is, well, that fan's not doing anything. I thought we kept this one always on. Uh, the hot end fan. So the, if I just quickly, I'm hoping you can hear the difference in, in noise there. So the hot end fan is really, really loud. Um, maybe grab the same fan as in the, in the Mark III, use the knock to a 40 millimeter fan. And that would make this printer massively better in the sound department, just make it a lot quieter. As is, it is quieter than most printers with standard Allegro drivers, simply because the motion doesn't make that much noise, but the fan is kind of annoying, to be honest. Does the Raptor have the wipe wire brush and bucket? No, it does not. It just has a standard bit. As you can see, hopefully here, it's just a standard PEI sheet on, or adhered to an aluminum sheet, and then on the bottom it has silicone, but there's no, no add-ons as in buckets or wipe brushes or other stuff like that. Oh, unless it's on the, on the x-axis, but it is not, so, no. Team C's are just in the straight up step stick compa compatibility mode? Uh, possibly, because if you look at the, uh, at the screenshot from the, from the listing on AliExpress, they don't have the communication interface broken out, I think. So it's just really simple carrier boards, but it works. Like, I don't know if the, if the current Melson episode is already out, if Stefan is still in chat, maybe he knows that. Um, but Stefan and myself talked about how hard it is to use Trinamic drivers and printers um, because he did get the 
the tear time, see this. Um, and he's kind of disappointed that it's so noisy because it's using a leg drivers or some other driver that um, is not as quiet as the Trinamics. So yeah, using Trinamic drivers is not hard. You can run them in stepstick compatibility mode and it's just a, a plug and play switch. Haas is asking, is it open source? Uh, this printer is, I don't believe is open source. Um, maybe if Scott Latine is still watching uh, Marlin developer or main developer of Marlin, he may know something about the Marlin firmware open sourceness, but the, um, the printer itself, the mechanical design of the printer is not open source. It does use a ton of 3D printed parts. Again, so the almost the entire carrier or the extruder assembly is printed. This entire, no, no, no. The entire, well, hub, wire hub is, is in a 3D printed enclosure. Um, but yeah, it, it is not an open source design, I believe. So yes, it is an, an 8-bit board. It's a standard 8-bit modern board that it's running. Um, I'm not, it, it doesn't look like a standard, like the MKS or uh, any of the other boards. It may just be a standard or like a, standard, a custom design. It does have the FormBot or the Vive Dino uh, font or, or label on there. So, yeah. Seems to be a custom board, but again, there's not much to 8-bit boards. There's no smoke coming out of it yet, that's good. Uh, I just felt the, the SSR, the solid state relay that's controlling this massive 230, 240 volt heated bed. Um, and it's not getting hot, so I'm hoping that's, that's all right. Yeah. So Scott mentioning, uh, hasn't found the download page for Raptor 2 configs for Marlin, so it's looking like they do use, so they, they obviously do use the Marlin firmware on this printer, but a requirement for using open source uh, software and open source designs is to publish your modifications that you do make to that software. So what they would be required to do technically is to release the config files for this printer. I will need to ask them about that because it's, I mean like you're not getting much out of the configs, right? It's not, it's not like they're, they're changing or improving the firmware um, like Creality did with their uh, SD card power fail functionality, which eventually I think did get published and, and Creality did comply pretty well there. But uh, like a standard printer config, like, okay, steps, you get a PID profile and that's really, that's really all there is to a printer. Uh, maybe the light is, is an M42 profile, um, M42 command. Well, though I did see that um, the LCD does give you option to turn the light on and off. Everything is powered off of, oh, I'm just noticing that the filament is coming off of the spool because oh, filament holder, not a, not a fan of this. Oh well. Right, uh, somebody asked, is this all 24 volt? I believe so. I believe so. I'm, I, yeah, there's only a single power supply in there. They're saying it's Meanwell. It does look like one of those slimmer Meanwell units. Um, so I believe it is entirely 24 volt, of course, Arduino and all that runs off of uh, five volts, but I, I am under the impression that the hot end is 24 volt. However, the heated bed is 230, so it doesn't make that big of a difference anyways. Just trying to catch up with chat here. Holy crap, this is moving uh, really quickly. Uh, Flex Plexico is, is saying the cable chain on some models of this printer was too constrained and led to breakage in the 230 volts line. Can you show what your cable chain looks like on the bed? 
Uh, I can I can actually not show you that right now, but I will try to show you that uh, once the print is done. So what I can tell you right now is that the cable chain or the drag chain for the heated bed wires is actually running on the desk surface itself. So there's no track there. It is just sitting down on the table, which looks kind of janky. I mean, they could have at least put a track there. Um, but I will take a look at that once we are done with this print. I think I can just put this down sideways eventually. I mean, wiring looks looks okay-ish. I, mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with it as is. I'm, I'm still, this, uh, this D-sub connector up here is still weirding me out slightly because it's like... Ah, why though? But <laughs> yeah, so far it's um, wiring seems to be okay-ish. It's not the worst I've ever seen, and there's again, there's nothing that I see wrong with it. It's just you could have done it cl more cleanly. Aluminum heater block to 350C um, shouldn't be an issue, right? It's just not going to be transferring heat quickly enough. So this is a, a cast aluminum block, it looks like. Slow mode not working. I don't know, I'm just looking at top chat here. I'm not looking at the, at all chat. Doesn't look significantly different, so. Looks like a prototype, yeah. Um, it is definitely looking looking lacking polish in some areas like uh, like I pointed out the pulley on the x-axis this one right here is way too large for the belt that it's actually driving I can show you those things in a second so that looks kind of jank um, I but I've seen worse like I've, I've definitely seen worse like if I had to compare it to um, to this guy to the uh, to the CR10 so this is this is a an older model CR10 obviously this is not what they ship right now though it's still called CR10 I would say they're on par like there are some things about the CR10 that I don't enjoy a lot um, there are some things that I, that I can see with this printer that's that could have been done not better because it looks like it's, it's all working but maybe more elegantly like it's not out of the ordinarily out, out of the ordinary bad or anything it's like sure for the size so again um let me just go through that again this printer is 400 by 400 by 500 millimeters large which is large which is larger than the cr10 it's also much more expensive than the cr10 at 900 euros the cr10 is less than that obviously um but if you look at the larger CO10s, they also go up in price pretty quickly because it's just, you know, you need extra material, you need, you have extra weight in shipping, you have, uh, you know, more material use. It, it just goes up in price, even though you don't really, oh yeah, it's just 10% or 25% longer. It still goes up in price simply because of, of logistics. Even. This entire package was 22 kilograms. Um, so that obviously is... You know, shipping does does cost a significant amount of what you're paying for this machine. Just shipping from China to your doorstep, that does make up a big part of the price of this machine. But it also comes with stuff like the, uh, the ball screws on the Z-axis, which so far seem to be doing their job. I don't see any Z-wobble. Um, it does have dynamic drivers. It does have a light up top. Like, come on, the CR10. Oh, that actually does get pretty warm. The CR10 doesn't have a light obvious advantage for the for the Raptor um, yeah they does come with PI so it's it's a bit of a different bracket than um, just the stock CO10 yeah uh, Casey's also saying it seems a bit higher end the components are definitely higher end though the craftsmanship maybe is is comparable Babysitting the spool is not okay. Yeah, so the spool mount... Babysitting the spool on this size printer is definitely the worst thing you... or the last thing you want to do. 
Um, so this spool mount with the with the ball bearings and the spool riding on it, I'm again I'm not a huge fan of it because the, you know the printer starts shaking, this thing shakes off, whatever, and cardboard spools also don't run all that well on on these uh, on these tracks. Uh, you can always use a different spool mount. I mean, the, the spool mount, if, if I'm going to complain about things, it's not going to be the spool mount. Yeah, get over here. I mean, so far the printer's actually looking, it's looking good. The fan is not on. Can I, can I actually turn the fan on? So we, we are getting some curling. Fan speed, 250. Ah, uh, the fan is definitely not on. So, I was wondering about that a minute ago. So I just checked, so the fan should be on. Fan speed, 255. It was at 252. Um, let's go back into tune. Fan speed, 255. It should be on at full blast, but it is not so this fan right here the part cooling fan on the side which i maybe can show you guys maybe yeah maybe 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 there that is just standing still so these overhangs down here where it's where is it down there that overhang that is curling up this fan seems to be broken or not plugged in or something i am not entirely sure, but it should be spinning. I mean, if it's not spinning, that's kind of a that's kind of a bummer on a printer this large, where you well, we do want your prints to be reliable. Spin it with your finger. Yeah, I spun it with my finger. It doesn't. It spins freely, but it doesn't spin up. That kind of sucks. Um, spray the bearings with plastic dip. Yeah, so question about nozzle size. This thing does have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle as default, which is stupid. Um, it should have something larger for sure. But then again, for larger stuff, it should have give the D sub a wiggle. I am wiggling the D sub, but I'm only moving the printer around. So that does not turn anything on. Uh, it should have a larger nozzle for sure, but with a no larger nozzle, it should also have a, um, a volcano block because just giving you a larger nozzle without actually being able to pump more heat into the filament is not going to do you much good simply because of, of consistency, consistency of uh, how hot the filament comes out of the nozzle. So yeah, someone was also, no speed sensor? No, no speed sensor, Craig. Um, could have copied that off, off of the Mark III, but they did not. How does it compare to the Artillery X1? Uh, I do not know. Stefan maybe knows that, how good of a machine the, the X1 is. Uh, the Sidewinder X1 Artillery. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Artillery Sidewinder X1. Um, I have not seen that machine in person, so I don't know how good it is. I. On a gut feeling, I would say the artillery is maybe a bit of a nicer machine. But yeah. Dark Spectre is mentioning, yes, you can take off the red shroud, which is true. And then you can actually get to the wires and I can see the wires right here. Like it's, it's open. Um, maybe from that perspective, where do we need to get to there? I can kind of see it, but there's all the all the wires, all the connectors are just on a PCB over here. But it does not seem like anything is wrong with it. I can see the um, the fan connector being plugged in. It looks like the cable's a bit tight, so may have pulled out, but I don't see anything wrong with it right now. Did I set the fan speed in the slicer? I did, and I also checked on the LCD that it is. Uh, that it should be on because the value that you see on the LCD screen does it actually show fan? Yeah, it does show fan. 
it does show fan speed right there so it should be spinning at 97 percent uh, and if you check what binary or what 8-bit no i misclicked again did they Did they actually mess up the extru uh, the, the knob again where it's... What are you doing, dear extruder? Crap. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? That's going to be the end of this print anyways. Uh, because the filament change does not feed enough filament into it. And our vase is pretty much done at this point. So I will just hit a quick reset. There we go. Click, click, there is the Beel Touch extending. But yeah, this was on. Um, the fan should have been on. That's all I'm saying. The fan should have been on, should be spinning. There is something broken there, uh, or at least something that is not as it should be without. Yeah, Frozen Walkway asking about camera gear. Uh, thank you, Part Time Rolling, for posting the link. Uh, my gear, that is correct. So, camera gear. GH5, GH5, uh, that's a G7, and that's a screen cap, and that's also a G7, all going into a quad HDMI recorder by Blackmagic Design. Yeah, and then various lenses on these. Cool, so the fan is broken on this one for sure. What can I what can I say about the rest of this printer while we have the print cool off? Because this is still at 53 degrees um, We can we can definitely see how this print is looking because of the lack of the fan It's kind of hard to do it backwards So from that perspective it actually looks okay. okay there we go from that perspective It actually looks okay, but if you look at it from the top Where did I see that? Oh, yeah down here So down here you can see uh, in the bottom there you can see the holes that is just curling basically that is where the the print curled up too much but overall print quality on this quick vase test print if we ignore the curling like i don't know I, I guess the printer should come with a a working fan if you ignore the curling i'm going to say print quality is actually pretty good For a non-calibrated, non-tuned profile. I mean, of course, the filament does make it look pretty <laughs> with 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 little issue or with little uh, with little effort, with ease. Yeah. So the the first layer was still a bit too high up. You can see the gaps between the individual lines there, but so far so good. So for the first impressions uh, on this printer, under extruded? No, it's not under extruded. Uh, in fact no i don't have a uh, i don't have calipers here but the extrusion width looks okay which on a vase print is a an excellent indicator for how much you're extruding this is good um yeah and print quality if you put a larger nozzle on this you know is, is not going to be as critical as with you know a smaller print like this okay so yes i do not have the version with the laser because the laser again is possibly illegal to import it's you're not it's not cool to use it without any sort of a shroud uh, if it is more than a few hundred milliwatts or how much is it more than 50 mil, 50 milliwatts i'd say uh you do run into the, the risk of roughly not like legally binding advice here but if it's if it's a powerful laser that can cut stuff that can engrave stuff you look into that or you look into a reflection of that thing you're blind in one eye it's Kind of dangerous it's kind of stupid to use a laser without an enclosure without any sort of like safety mechanism um and yeah you have like a reflective aluminum plate here it's just it's not cool i don't want to deal with open lasers like this so i did not get the one with the laser i just have the extruder version which probably with you know pla fumes and all that is, is bad enough <clears throat> um 10 watt laser holy crap um I would definitely recommend against that. Just saying. So impressions on the uh, Formbot Raptor 2. So component spec list looks really good. Has the ball screws, has the filament sensor, which is of course just a very, very simple switch. It has TMC drivers, which actually work really well, the Trinamic 2208. Um, 
make for a really smooth operation. So I'm not I'm not seeing any ripple out effects here, which may also be due to uh, the weight of just the bed. Just uh, you know that that kind of dampens out vibrations, and the x-axis is also you know has a long belt, so that does dampen things. Yeah, so dynamic drivers do work. The fan does not work uh, on the cooling. It does have this fancy fan shroud, which maybe I can show you guys. So it does have a really fancy, like, circular fan shroud around the hot end. There you go. Which I don't know how much that does or, or if that's just restricting airflow, but it does have that. Um, yeah, it does have a bunch of other, like, spec sheet features that... Um, I guess I guess do make sense. It, it's nice to, to have them. Like these these linear rails seem to work really well. There's very little slop. Somebody was asking on Twitter like, is this um, this z-axis construction is this rigid? And yes, it is. This is very very rigid. I don't see this needing a brace at all because again, it is screwed through the bottom, and it does have a relatively large surface area where it's making contact with the ah fender turned off. Nice. Does have a relatively large contact area because these profiles are 40 millimeters wide, where it makes contact with this bottom beam here. So you do you don't just have like a thin 20 millimeter. What is the the CO10? Yeah, CO10 is 20 millimeters. It is it's actually twice as wide, which means it's twice as stiff or more. And yeah, this is not this is not going anywhere. So I wouldn't worry about braces with this machine, especially not in this direction, because like there there are no forces on this upright back and forth because all you're doing is, is moving this tool head back and forth in that direction and in that direction it is also extremely rigid so that's good um wiring yes somebody was asking about the uh, drag chain in the bottom of this printer because it does have a drag chain for its heated bed just get this filament out of the way before we drop it Yeah, it's kind of weird that it has the red power cord permanently attached to it. So the uh, the electronics power power cord goes into a receptacle. The power cord for the heated bed and the SSR is just hanging off of off of the printer, which is kind of weird. But it's in line with what this printer kind of feels like overall. Like weird design choices like that. Um, which aren't necessarily that bad, but you you do differently. Like for example, this uh, this weird bolt that's just hanging out of the uh, out of the base frame there. So this is an M3. This is like an, a long M3 bolt that's just sticking out. Like it's uh, what is this thing doing? Is this like an end stop switch or an, an, a mechanical stop so that the bed doesn't go out of out of range? I don't know. Looks like it's already crashed into the bottom, uh, into the bottom profile down here. It looks like there's a small mark there, but I can't actually move that. So yeah, that, that's what I'm saying about the um, the drag chain for the bed. Typically, this is against the table, so this is fine. But as is, it's just dangling around. Um, yeah, is this too short? I believe this is just. Barely okay, yeah. So it is not too short, but it does stretch relatively tight when the bed is all the way up front. So I'd, I'd say that's all right. Ow, 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 ow. That's okay. Um, though again, these are not direct chain rated cables, so they may still break over time. That's just something with drag chains because you do have relatively small, you do have relatively small radii, but um, well, that may be something that just fails in the long term. Uh, Jens, uh, the 4040 is more than 10 times stiffer than 2020. That is true, but I'm thinking about the, the contact patch where it's actually making contact with the bottom one. Is it the same way there too? I, I believe so. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, so the direction here is okay. This box here is the mean well power supply 
well, supposedly it's a mean well. It looks like a mean well. It looks like a design that I've seen in, in mean well supplies. I will need to open this up. There's this conduit, this flex conduit here, that has ground and something else. It looks like it's supposed to go into a hole right there, into a printed part, but it's just, it's not going into it. I guess if you push it like that, but it's not secured in there anyway. Anyway, so wiring could be done better. Not a fan, um, but I don't see anything that's like really wrong with it. What else? Um, yes, issues of, of the falsely advertised max temperatures on the heated bed and the hot end. So the heated bed is, I like the heated bed construction. It is a four millimeter aluminum sheet with PE, with, with a PI sheet on top. It, it actually seems to be a, nah, it's not too thick. It's like a normal thickness PI. Then it has a silicone heater on the bottom. As we've seen in the heated bed comparisons, this is pretty much the best way to build a heated bed uh, in what I've seen and in what I think it, uh, how do I say it? Uh, in, in what I've seen with heated beds so far, this is one of the best ways to build one. I would have loved to see a flex bed, especially with prints this big. Uh, you're gonna have a real tough time removing a 40 by 40 centimeter uh, object from this, but I mean, maybe you can put like a wham bam bed on that or something, but it does not come with one. And having another layer on top here does add weight, definitely adds weight. And this is pretty weight optimized. It's maybe, I don't know. It, it, the CO10 bed actually feels weightier than this for some reason, maybe because there's a bit more friction in this one, but yeah, um, this is a relatively light bed for what it is, but the 150 degrees Celsius promise that they gave on this bed, it can, like, technically, I guess, it can go up to 150 degrees Celsius because it has enough power. It does use an SSR and 240 volts mains power to power the bed, which I like. Um, but the PI, and the, the bubbles are still in here, the adhesive in the PI or underneath the PI did start bubbling up at, you know, those 135 that the firmware is already limited, limited at. So the... Um, the 150 degree advertisement for the bed, not gonna happen because you, you, you're gonna have the, uh, the silicone heater mat probably fail before that or at least the adhesive and you're gonna have the PEI just coming loose and bubbling off. On the other hand, the hot end, and I can zoom into that again. Maybe we can see that, did we get even more ooze coming out? No. But the hot end is an E3DV6 clone-ish style. If we see the nozzle, you can see the nozzle is a, is a bit pointier. Eh, well, nice shelf in the background. The nozzle is a bit pointier than the genuine uh, E3DV6 nozzles. But the, uh, the heat break, which you probably, yeah, you can kind of make it out. The heat break is the thick version, which means the thick version is the one that has the PI tube or PI, PTFE tube going all the way through it. So. That means it doesn't need to be made as well because it has the PTFE tube as a low friction liner in this and throughout the entire thing. Um, but the way that these all metal heat breaks are supposed to work is they're supposed to work as an insulator and they're supposed to have a slick metal surface in the center, which means you don't have any high temperature polymers or any PTFE in the actual heater zone. So the way that these are built is they're only safe up to around 248 degrees, which means, you know, safe as in PTFE does compose into pretty toxic stuff, uh, into pretty toxic vapors once you overheat it, but also safe as in it's just gonna melt and deform if you heat it up too much. So this is a hot end that is not safe or usable up to those 350 degrees Celsius that it can set uh, or that, that are advertised. The firmware lets you set it to 345 degrees, which is crazy for what they're using here and kind of unre in, un unresponsible, in irresponsible, irresponsible. So that's that's not a not a fantastic piece there. Overall, printer, it prints. It prints decently. Um, yeah, see your tennis glass on it, that is true. Um, however, glass and aluminum do have a really similar density. So if you just have glass, well, CO10 does have a heater PCB, doesn't it? Yeah, so CO10 does have two layers. This is just a single layer with the relatively light silicone heater on the bottom and then 
aluminum and PEI on top. So, yes. Um, testing on this printer is going to take a while because, uh, well, like I said, a single print is probably going to be a week. <laughs> so, um, but I do like the fact that I now have a printer that is fairly large because even though, even though the CR10 is 30 by 30 by 40 centimeters, it's just, um, it's still not a really massive printer. You can't really print parts that are much bigger than what you can do on a, on a standard Prusa. So your mic, my mic is fine. So yeah, uh, this is gonna be fun to use. Just doing like those really large prints, I will probably need to do or a nozzle swap on this and, and put something else in this because uh, you know with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle it's just not gonna be it's not gonna be great. Um, is it worth the cost? Natus is asking. Here's the thing: the market doesn't have a ton of large scale printers like this, especially at that size. Like I've I've worked with a company that needed like really large printers, and we ended up what did we get them? We got them a stacker, a stacker S4, which does have. I think slightly more print volume, but it's also 10,000 euros. Or is it, or is it more? It's like 12,000 or something. This is, this thing is 900. So for the price, if you need something big, I think this is one of the few options that actually gives you a big print volume uh, versus like the CR10 S5 or something, which is slightly bigger than this, but also slightly more expensive, I believe. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. So, so far it does print. Like I can say that much. I don't know if it's going to hold up. I do hate the fact that the fan is not working. Um, but overall, it's it's kind of what I expected. And I'm not I'm not disappointed by it. It's just it's it's in line with what I expected about the Raptor 2.0 for 900 euros plus imports. It's all right. It's all right. Like again, shipping is 900 euros with free shipping. The shipping is going to be a massive part of the printer cost. So yeah. Um, I guess that's gonna be it for me for today. Um, yeah, GMAX might be competitive. I've not used the GMAX, you gotta ask Joel about that one. Yeah, that's gonna be it for for me for today. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Here's another shot of that little vase that we printed. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, thank you all for hanging out in chat. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Let me know in the comments underneath this live stream because the recording will be available for the stream. I'm not sure if you can write comments right now yet, but let me know in the comments what you would like to see tested on this printer, whether it's large scale, I don't know, print the largest bench in the world, make it a multi-part, I don't know. Let me know what you, you know, blah, 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 what you would like to know about this printer and what I can include in the review. But other than that, um, usual things. Uh, thank you for all the people who tipped during the stream. Thank you for all the YouTube members who have uh, stopped by and said hello. Thank you for all the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for making this possible for me. And yeah, uh, get subscribed, like the video, uh, share it with your friends, do all those things. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.